In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a work back schedule in Notion. So the idea is that if you have projects that you do over and over again that have very similar phases and very similar tasks, you can use Notion's automations to help you automatically create those projects and sub projects and sub tasks, etc., with some limitations. So I'm going to show you how I would handle this. I'm going to use exhibitions as an example. So let's say we are designing an exhibition that's going to happen two or three years from now. I want it to automatically break down this project project into five smaller projects and it's going to automatically map out those projects based on the parent project's specified launch date. In this example, let's say I've got a new exhibition and I've set the project date to November 1st, 2029. What I want to have Notion do is create a number of these sub project phases for me. So what I've done here is I've created a couple different templates and I've created it such that the project itself has a parent child relation. So this is super important. I think a lot of people like to do a lot of heavy lifting with tasks and subtasks. I actually think doing a sub project parent child relationship is actually a lot easier to work with. It's really good to break down some of these project phases, especially if they take more than a week and even more than a day, you probably want to set these up as projects. So in this example, I've got a parent project template and all I've done is I've related the project to itself to create a parent child relationship. So there's a two way relation and Notion will show you related to this database. So again, I'm, I'm inside the exhibitions projects and then I've got a stage property. So these different stages represent the different sub projects that I want to create. I've got a status property description and I've got a roll up to the exhibition date. So that way all sub projects can also very quickly show when the exhibit date is, and then I've got a relation to the tasks database. In the body of this parent project page, I want to be able to see all of the sub projects related to that project. So in the template here, I'm filtering all projects to only show me ones where the parent contains this template name. That's essential. And then here I've got all of the tasks grouped by project below. So let's take a look at what's actually happening here. I've got a sample exhibition here right? It's empty. There's no sub projects and tasks yet. And so what I've done is I've set up this automation to automatically do this population of the projects as soon as I change the status to activate. So let me real quick activate this project to show you what is happening. And then we'll take a look under the hood. So I'm going to change this project status from not started to activate, and that's going to trigger the automation, which can take a couple of seconds. So let's give it a minute to populate those projects. There we go. So you can see Notion has automatically created five projects. It is sorting them by ascending date. And so I know that the new exhibition, that's the parent project that was activated, was set to 2029. And then you can see there's a little bit of the work back schedule based on that date. And I can click on this view here and I can view the project slightly differently. So I can see all of the sub projects here. And I can also see a timeline view of those projects as well. So let's jump to one of these dates here, right? I can jump and you, and you can see that this project is spanning quite a bit of time. So I might even want to switch this up to year so I can see things. Uh, and this is an easy way also to adjust the dates on the, the timeline view. So maybe the design actually is going to take, you know, six months or something like that. I can jump to the next phase and I can extend that as well to give things a date range. So, you know, that's, that's one quick way to give projects a date range instead of a singular date. Okay. So that's the automation in action. Let's take a look at what's actually happening under the hood. When the trigger, which is the status is set to activate when that happens, I am adding a page to the exhibition projects as the business case template. I'm setting the name to be the same as the trigger page, but I'm adding business case to it. So I'm taking the trigger page and I'm formatting that as text. I'm adding a colon and a space, and then I'm adding business case. Now you don't have to do that. You could remove the trigger and just say business case. But if you're running multiple exhibitions, multiple projects, yeah, you don't want to have a number of the same projects named business case without that context. So pulling in the trigger page, formatting it as text is a helpful way to do that. Now I'm setting the stage here, but that's actually already done inside the business case template. So I could actually delete this step. It's kind of redundant. And so 
this date property is really what's doing the heavy lifting. So the trigger page is the parent page because I'm setting that to activate. And so what we can do is pull that trigger page date property, and then I'm subtracting three years from that trigger page. So that allows me to set the first phase three years in advance of that final date. I could also change this to months if I wanted to say, you know, maybe 24 months, 36 months, 300 months, whatever you want to do, you can change the number property there. I'll just do 30 months for now. And I want to relate this project to the trigger page. So that's going to set it as the parent. And then I want to change the status to in progress. You could change this to a different status. You could say not started. I'm just going to change it to in progress. And then I'm doing the exact same thing. So once you get your your properties looking the way you want, you can then duplicate this stage and just make any changes that you want. So changing the template to the design. Um, again, the stage is already set in the design template, so I can remove that. Each of these templates contains a series of buttons that are associated with that project phase, which I'll show you in a second. So again, I'm going to delete this stage because that's already set in the design template. And then I'm doing the same thing where I'm doing the date subtract from the trigger page date. Now, this automation is just based on a singular date that we're subtracting from. In the next phase, I'll show you what it looks like to adjust entire date ranges based on a trigger page range. Parent is the trigger page again, status is in progress. So all of these are following the exact same formula with the exception of the actual exhibition run, which I just want to be the trigger page date. So that's kind of date zero. And then we've got a phase that happens after the exhibition runs, which is sort of like a debrief. And so for this one, I'm adding time instead of subtracting time. So I'm doing a date add, taking the trigger pages date, and I'm adding three months to it. Uh, and then similarly, I can remove this stage because that's redundant as well. And so this is basically five projects being added automatically as soon as the parent project is set to activate. So to really understand and, and really master automations, you're going to want to get familiar with working with formulas inside of these properties. Let me just show you what this looks like to add a new action. So I'm going to add something to the exhibition projects. I'll just use a the business case template, and then I'm going to update the date property just to show you what this looks like. Instead of selecting a date, we're choosing a custom formula this time instead. And that's where you can start to get into, you know, the trigger page. We can select properties from that trigger page, the date property, etc. So you want to start to get familiar with formulas, at least in a basic capacity to be able to really work with these automations. So now let's look at the second phase of this, which is adding all the tasks that go along with those phases. So I'm going to open up the parent exhibition page here, and you'll see all the sub projects are here. And you can see them here in a timeline view, or I can see them in a table view. And I can see there's no tasks yet. So let's go through and add the tasks. So let's start with the business case phase of the project. I'm just going to open that up. And you'll see I've got this button that says generate business case tasks, which automatically is creating two tasks. And you can see it's pulling the same date property from the trigger page. So let's take a look at what that button is actually doing. When the button is clicked, I'm adding a page to the exhibition tasks. I'm just using the new page template in the task database. I'm setting the date of this new task to have this page's date. I want to set the project to be this current page. And I'm just setting the name of the task here, propose exhibition details. These are just placeholder tasks. And then I'm doing the same thing with the next item. And once you get your dates in there and your project in there, um, and when you see blue, it means there's a, a dynamic property. So we're, we're pulling from the current page. And then you can just duplicate as many of these tasks as you want. Sign off on proposal, send invoice, something like that. And just done. That's going to generate three tasks. There we go. I can see even more tasks. And those are start, starting to populate here. And so that's why I like using the projects, sub projects, tasks. And then even within that, you could start to do subtasks as well. But I do think having some project phases can be really helpful for kind of breaking things down into more manageable chunks. And then I would just use the navigation here to go through to the next page, which is design, generate the design tasks. And the exact same thing is happening here 
we're just using the current pages date and the current pages project. And then we're just generating some tasks to go along with that. And so I've already generated these tasks. You can see them starting to fill up here under that next phase. Next thing, ticket sales, next. So it just takes a couple seconds to generate the tasks for a, a pretty large project. Now, one of the reasons I'm not setting up automations for these tasks is because Notion does have some issues with automations inside of templates. So I think doing your tasks as kind of ready to go inside of a button, you can generate 20 tasks. It takes a little bit to set up, but if you're doing this you know, over and over again, uh, it takes a lot of time to add these tasks. So this is the quickest way to kind of batch update a bunch of properties and uh, have it all ready to go in just a couple clicks. So I think we've almost completed that. There's the closure tasks, great. And you can see these are all reflecting kind of what's happening here. So because there's a date range here, that date range is impacting this task here, close the exhibit. So that's how we can automatically generate a ton of projects and tasks in one go. So let's generate one more parent project. New parent project. We'll just change the icon here. And again, let's set the date to December 7th, 2030, just for fun. And I will set this to activate. We can start to see all those projects are getting generated. And again, I just open up the business use case. Great. Next page, design tasks. Next, ticket sales. Closure tasks. And then this dashboard gives me a place to manage all of that. So I can see all projects if I want. I can see just the parent projects like this. I can see a timeline view with all the projects. I can see the tasks grouped by project here. I can collapse these if I want. Um, I can set the grouping metadata here if I want to change that to be the earliest date, the latest date, or the date range. I can do that. So there's a couple different uh, ways to view that information. And then a timeline view of all the tasks. There's going to be a lot if you view these in timeline view. So that's how I would set up a work back schedule. Obviously, this example is using really long spans, but we can do something kind of similar with date ranges as well. So let me show you this exact same example. But instead of just adding a single date, we are going to do a date range. So fancy web design project. Let's open this up and let's apply the project parent template. So it's the exact same structure as the other one, but we're just using a web design example. And then again, let's say this is going to be March 1st, 2026 and set that to active. Let's see what happens. Now you'll notice this one has date ranges instead of a singular date. So let's take a look what's happening there. And let's also just open up one of these phases. Same mechanism, generate the tasks. Excellent. Go to the design phase, generate the tasks. And they've all got date ranges that are reflective of this date range. So again, let's just take a look at the automation quickly. I've got a end date work back and a start date work back. So let's say if your project starts next week, you could have all of the phases kind of based on a start date, or if you know when you need to launch, you can set the end date and use an automation to do a work back that way. So this one's paused, so we don't want to have two automations going at the same time. So let's open up the work back schedule and take a look at what's happening here. Very, very similar structure to what we're doing in the other one. But in this case, we are doing a more advanced manipulation with the date because we want to be able to work with date ranges. And so what I'm doing here is I'm setting the trigger page date, which is the parent page. So it's the web design project. I'm setting the launch date as the date. So that's the trigger. And what I'm doing is setting that date as the end date of the project. And that way I can work back from that date. And so, for example, the discovery phase, 
what I'm doing is I'm taking the end date, the launch date, and I'm working back 21 weeks from that as my start date. And then I'm going to 17 weeks. So it takes a little bit of math. I actually think the figuring out the math for me is the hardest part. I have this little area down here. Math is hard where I did a, a bit of a work back schedule here. Okay, if the launch is happening on this date, and the discovery phase is four weeks, how far in advance is that? So it takes a little bit of time to work that out. And then you can adjust your automation to make sure that you're accurately doing those date ranges. And so here, all I'm doing is I'm naming the variable, I've created a variable called launch, and that's going to be the trigger pages and date. And that way I can then reference launch here. So I'm subtracting 21 weeks from the launch. Here I'm subtracting 17 weeks from the launch. Each phase is doing exactly the same thing, 17 weeks to 11 weeks. And so that will give me a date range for each of those projects. And then again, each of these projects, these sub projects has a button inside that is referencing the current pages date and the current page as the parent project. So it's the exact same structure, whether you need to do something more complex with uh, date ranges, the same rules apply there. And then I think giving yourself a couple views to view this information. So I like to um, view grouped by parent so that I can see everything kind of tucked away as needed, because if you've got lots of projects going on at the same time, it can get pretty unwieldy. And you can see these different uh, phases happening here. And so, yeah, let's, let's create one more big project, apply the template, and we'll say this is 2030. And let's activate that. Great, and so we can see all of those phases are working back from the launch date. And then of course, if you want to, you can say, give this a end date, and then maybe this one, you're actually starting in 2025. You've got a very long five year big project. But yeah, again, this is great for if you do very similar projects over and over again, it takes a little bit of setup, but once you understand how to manipulate dates inside of your automations, you are going to be laughing. And I'm not someone who's very familiar with formulas, but I've learned enough about the basics to make sure that I can manipulate date ranges, date subtraction, date adding, and that sort of thing. So that's really going to help you with these automations. There's lots of different ways you can do this, but this is just one example using a single date property and or using a date range property. And then you really just want to use your templates to do some of that heavy lifting with the buttons making sure that you've got all of your tasks kind of ready to go and the properties are automatically assigned. This is a great way to also automatically assign certain tasks to certain people on your team if they handle certain tasks over and over again. So again, lots of different ways that you can utilize these automations to make your life easier. Um, but this is definitely one of the ways that I think is, is pretty cool. So I hope that this is helpful and I hope it saves you a ton of time as you begin to set up your projects. Thanks so much for watching. If you have questions, definitely leave them below and I will see you next time.